My name is Jim, and I'm glad you have joined me. Some of you have migrated to this channel by way of another YouTube channel that I have as a content creator for Last Day's Awakening. Now, let me explain just a little bit about who we are. My wife, Jean, and I have been uh, serving as ministers, as pastors now, for uh, 40 years. And in that 40 years of marriage, as well as ministry, we have branched out into so many different areas, and we want to share those areas with you. And most recently, we have been blessed by an acre of property uh, where we have downsized from another home, and we now have our dream. And what we are going to do is step-by-step -step document how we transform an acre of property into what we call a little bit of taste of Eden on earth and we hope that you will join us. Now the content of this channel will be multifaceted. First of all, today we'll be looking at some of the things that I've been doing to begin beekeeping and I think you'll find that fascinating. I can't wait to get started. We're also going to be transforming the property making it a colorful meadow with lots of fruit plants, lots of pollinator plants, and a huge garden that will help us to become much more self-sustaining as we go through life. We are both uh, over 60. I'll not tell you our age, but we are both over 60. And although we never see ourselves actually retiring from the work that God has called us to do, we know that we go through seasons where things change. We also know that our economy is kind of in that rocky place, and we're not going to be doing politics but the climate of our world today, according to even biblical principles, is that we need to be prepared to be more self-sufficient uh, with the land that we have. And so we're going to be walking you through that. We're going to be walking you through building a, a garden, building flower beds, uh, decorating the place with plants, beekeeping, I'll branch out even into some of the area, other areas that I am interested in and have done for many years, including hunting. But also, we want to give you the opportunity to grow in faith. And in these days, we need to learn to live by faith as well as working with our hands uh, in community with others. So all of those will be our goals for this channel. And you're going to see our successes. You're going to see our failures. You're going to see us right here where we are. Uh, my wife, Jean, is a little bit shy. She's going to have to learn to work at being in front of a camera, but she's a, she's a, a tremendous cook. She is a great uh, gardener. Uh, she loves planting flowers. She loves planting vegetables as well, but that's been kind of my venue for, for a lot of years. She loves birds, and so you're going to see her go through the whole process of how she attracts birds and uh, how we're going to attract other birds, like in the area, bluebirds. We just, we, they're so rare. Uh, and yet we're going to find ways to attract bluebirds. This is going to be our content, and every step of the way, we want you to know that we want to be involved in how you grow in your faith. So we'll have other content as well that will be more biblical teaching and even put up some of the sermons that I preach at the church that I pastor. And as we progress, you'll be able to tap into those things. Eventually, I'll have a website that you can go to and take part in. It's a little bit uh, less censored than some of the things on YouTube now are being censored. Whatever the case, we want you to join us. And so get ready. We're going to start today with some beekeeping items. So let's talk today about building a horizontal lay-ins hive by using scrap materials. Okay, so maybe you're like me and you don't want to spend the exorbitant prices that they are charging now in big box stores for wood. And yet you need to build a horizontal hive. There is generally scrap wood around my place. And so what I've done today is take a few sheets of 5 8 inch plywood that I was using to build um, a stage uh, at our church. And these are scraps that were left over. And so I took those and I thought, how can I turn these into horizontal hives? Well, let me show you what I've done. When you put two, when you put two two by tens together, you come out with about 18 and a quarter inches 
I've bumped it up a half an inch, actually a quarter inch, so that it gives just a little bit more B space at the bottom. And, um, and then finding the natural bow of the plywood, I have taken, taken a 17 and a half inch piece and laid it on top, glued it together and screwed it down. So what I come up with, taking into account that this plywood will bow naturally, I put the uh, crowns opposite one another and glued them together. What I came up with was a straight board. So they are glued together, well glued, and then with one inch screws in various locations, I brought them together. And uh, this should hold together nicely with glue and with screw. Now, I was very careful not to put screws where I'm going to be putting my B entrances or my vent holes. But there you go. I have two pieces of these ready to go. And now I'm going to cut out the end boards, which are both going to be 18 and a half inches. Uh, I'll glue those together. And then we will have our end boards for our 40 inch horizontal hive. And this is in the lay-ins style. So they're deep and, um, I'll be able to overwinter two colonies in this hive because this would be roughly a 22 frame hive. Uh, or if I have a, a colony that just goes wild and, and it doesn't look like I will be able to split it and yet want to overwinter a large hive, this will be perfect for that. So here we go with the end pieces. Okay, so we have two, two end pieces, both of those with a 23 30 seconds inch lip at the bottom for our bottom board. So there we go. Now let's put these things together.
Okay, I'm pulling that together so that my bottom board is tight to the side. So that will help any kind of warping that might take place. And, uh, and now I'm going to secure this. To my little shelf. Now I'm using inch and five eighths inch sheetrock screws to put on this bottom board. You might think, wait a minute, dude, those screws are gonna rot. They're gonna rust and break. And that's probably true. I'm gonna come back in with some staples and add some extra strength to this and maybe some longevity. But this is the bottom, number one. Number two, this whole box is made out of plywood. So the odds are the plywood will get a little moisture on it and expand and become useless a lot quicker than these screws will rust. So that's my thinking. What I'm doing is using scrap wood and uh, I'm just using what's on hand as far as screws. It will give me a few years, I'm pretty sure. My first coat of paint on this box will be with watertight paint from Benjamin Moore. And uh, that will give me a seal on the wood as well as these, uh, these screws that are exposed to the elements. So I think we're gonna be okay. Okay, I've gone ahead and pulled one of my frames to do a test run, and I found my first need for modification. Now, what I did was used plywood that is 23 30 seconds and doubled them up to give myself about an uh, inch and a quarter, slightly over an inch and a quarter. It's like 1.4725. So it's not my full inch and a half that I would normally use on my hives if I were using the two by 10 material. So, uh, you know, I did not take that into consideration when I built these ends. So what I'm gonna have to do, and it's not a bad modification, is just take one of my scrap pieces of 20, uh, 23, 30 seconds and uh, and rip that down as an interior trim piece to extend just a little bit my sidewall. And that will allow my frames to set in here nicely. Uh, in fact, I think I'm gonna need to do it on both sides. So that won't be a bad deal. Uh, it will give more bee space. The bees will be able to walk around just a little bit better. And it might actually help the ventilation issue. So uh, let's make that modification and then we will build our lid and put it all together. Okay, so our modification is in place. Turn this over. Let's get our frame. Put our lay-ins frame in. Fits perfectly. Fits perfectly. There we go. One of the things this will have, of course, when it's all finished, will be top pieces that will lay right across the top over the frames and give it that extra bit of insulation. And, uh, and then my I will be insulating my lids as well. So this ought to be pretty good. Um, 
should be pretty good for the bees. They're gonna have plenty of room to run around on the sides and in the bottom. All right, I took a little pause there to dig out some more scraps and I ended up putting this box on some legs. So it's gonna be a little bit easier to work with as I put on the, the trim pieces and then start on the lid. So here we go. I've already put just a couple of the trim pieces on and I'm gonna start on the rest of them. So shouldn't take too long now. Okay, I've got my hinges and I learned this on a couple of other hive builds your brain says put the hinge in the back side and you can open it from the front but this is where the bees enter they come and go right here so if you want to do this so that you when you inspect your hive or you're working in your hive manipulating something and you don't want to disturb the bees or disturb them as little as possible then you put the hinge in the front and work from behind. Smart thinking. Wasn't me who figured that out. It was B-Boy B Bill. Check him out. Check out his website. And there we go, we've got a, an opening lid. Now the deal is, it's not gonna hold rain very well, is it? <laughs> I'm sorry. So now we've got to uh, do a little bit of search for some scraps that we might have to see what we can come up with a top. In fact, I've got some, I've got some pretty decent one by material, I think it's one by six. And uh, I just may go ahead and, and cut that and use that for the top. Uh, maybe three pieces. One thing it will do is give me a little bit of an overhang and that can be kind of like a porch. Protect the girls as they go in and out if it's raining. So I think I'll do that. And uh, 
probably not wasted wood at that point. It's not scrap. One by eight material is not cheap. Okay, let's do it. By the way, by the way, this is Jean. She just walked in the door. She did not know I was recording. Wow, hello. Anyway, there you go. Great. I built a, another beehive out of scrap wood. It's all scrap. That's great. Except for the top. Can I see the inside? How it opens? Well, oh, it opens like progress. this, but all the boards will fall off. Gotcha. Now the thing about Jean is she likes to see things ahead. Anyway, there you go. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put some landing pads in the front and paint this thing up and we should be ready to go. I'll put a roof on it and I'll show you the finished product when I'm done. But just to let you know, this is about a three hour project. Take your time, be patient. And remember, patience is so huge for us. We have difficulty being patient. I don't know if you're like me, but I like to get things done quickly. I like to do them fast and, and I want things to be here like spring a lot quicker than the pace that it's coming. And we know it's a season you have to wait for, but so many good things happen in spring. We've got planting coming up. We're already doing some indoor planting. And Gene will be showing you, if you've never used indoor grow lights, how to, uh, how to start seeds under the grow light and see some progress taking place. In fact, we already have onions up. That's really cool. The point being, patience is sometimes difficult. And not only for getting out and doing garden things, but we can easily lose patience with each other. We can lose patience with people. We can lose patience during difficult circumstances. We all have trials. James, the brother of Jesus, said it this way, and I don't particularly like this verse, but it's so true. He said, count it all joy, my brothers, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the trying of your faith produces patience. Another word for patience there is perseverance. It produces perseverance. It's so hard sometimes to persevere. It's, it's hard to have patience. But that's also what the scripture says is part of the fruit of the Spirit. When the Spirit of God lives in us, because we've believed on the Lord Jesus and we have been made new, we've been made, made new creatures, all the sins of our past are gone and everything is brand new. We are new, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. The Holy Spirit dwells in us and he produces fruit. It's kind of like the grapevines I'm going to be planting in just a few weeks. And you can help me do that. You can watch this happen. I've never planted grapevines. I've never tended grapevines. We're going to do that. But when the, when the vine is planted and it grows... Eventually, you're going to have clusters of grape. That's fruit. That fruit will be on the vine. It will be on those branches. And the Lord tells us in John 15 that if we abide in him as the branch, and he's the vine, if we abide in him, we will bear much fruit. And one of those fruits is patience. So take your time as you're doing these things so you don't hurt yourself or you, you don't make some grievous errors Take your time as you're dealing with people and in your relationships, in your marriage, with your kids. Take your time. Be patient. And if you have trouble with patience, ask the Lord for help. And he will do that. When you believe on the Lord, when you believe in Jesus, and your life is new, you get a new start every single day. So if you messed up yesterday, if you failed at patience, if you failed at being patient yesterday, he'll help you today. Just ask. So there you go. There's some encouragement for your faith. Thank you for joining me today as I've built a 
horizontal lay-ins hive out of mostly scrap materials, and hopefully you can find materials around your place that you can build a hive and, uh, and get into beekeeping like I'm about to do. I don't have any bees yet. I'm impatient. I'm going to have some bees. I've got swarm traps sitting over there, and let me just point to the swarm traps, and those things are going to be going out in the next week and a half. It's going to be great. So, uh, stay tuned for the next episode. We'll be doing some planting and uh, we'll hang some storm traps and then we're going to be storm traps, swarm traps, and then it's going to be outside to start clearing out the area for a big garden. Thanks for being with me and God bless you.